Welcome to another session of our lecture, Management and Leadership, and we stop talking about behavior, foundations of behavior. And uh, I was mentioning that before, when we were talking a little bit about uh, psychological effects, also in other lectures, when it comes to marketing uh, research, for example, uh, a lot of um, the uh, a lot of uh, the last of, of the last Nobel prizes has uh, have been awarded to professors and research uh, colleagues, particularly looking at the behavior of people when it comes to certain kind of situation. And the overarching term for that is behavioral economics. And for every branch, we have a specific uh, research uh, yeah, subject or focus area. For example, there is behavioral finance. So why do people buy certain kind of shares and, and refrain from buying others, etc., etc.? And um, of course, behavior is also of paramount importance when it comes to organizations as well. What do we need to do in order to understand uh, organizational behavior? When we talked about management and uh, early theories of management, we talked about um, the studies of uh, Monsterberg and we talked about we talked about the Hawthorne studies, um, which were putting an emphasis on non-technical aspects when it comes to productivity and uh, efficiency and effectiveness inside the organizations. So the um, the research of the uh, behavior uh, within teams or of individual persons was becoming more and more important. So first thing we have to uh, to look into organizational behavior. What is what is organizational behavior in general? It is this um, the research of actions of people during work time. So how they behave in teams, how they are motivated or what impact um, their skills and capabilities have on others. And there is a dual focus. I was just pinpointing at that of this uh, research subject. So one is the individual. So organizational behavior scientists are looking on the individual behavior. So uh, about certain kind of attitudes of individual uh, people, but the personality of different kind of people, and also in how far these kind of traits um, do have an impact on the group behavior. Group behavior is, of course, the behavior of individuals in different kind of teams. So which kind of norms have an influence on the productivity of a certain kind of team? How's team building coming along? What are potential conflicts uh, in teams and how can you overcome those? And the primary goal is the main objective of organizational behavior is to better understand why people behave in a certain kind of way or why certain kind of teams are more productive than others and what are the measurements what are the kind of uh, levers and uh, elements and tools to steer this in a in a more uh, perfect direction in a better direction next slide So um, the organization can be seen as, as an iceberg. Uh, there are visible and invisible hidden aspects. And that is also what uh, we are referring to. Um, if you are in my other lecture, successful negotiation and communication, we were describing or we were using the metaphor of the iceberg as an image to better explain and understand communication in general. And um, I love the, uh, the image of the iceberg because behavior as communication has a visible aspect, which is all the strategies, objectives that are laid down, explained by the, by the organization. So there is a clear chain of command, which is specified. You have a certain kind of uh, structure of the organization, whether you have a, a staff department or a matrix organization. And you have, of course, and which is more important, uh, all the hidden aspects of the organization, which is attitudes of people when it comes to their bosses, when it comes to the organization. 
And these hidden aspects are hidden because they are not always openly communicated and articulated. And perceptions of people, group norms, informal interactions and interpersonal and intergroup conflicts that are not openly discussed. So what are the psychological factors that affect the behavior and of course in return also the productivity and the turnover of the entire organization? It is first the attitudes of people towards their job, towards their employer, but this also strongly depends on the personality and the personality type of the individual person, of the individual employee. And how the organization or the team or the department or the certain kind of task is perceived and then how far people are willing um, to uh, to uh, encounter learning and learning curves and improve their uh, their performance and that is having a very very big impact on the productivity of the individual person but also on the overall profitability of the corporation because all these attitudes and then the management of people and we're talking about management leadership so this is a leadership topic of course it is it is having a deep and profound impact on the satisfaction of the workers um, if if the employees are satisfied and they can identify with the organization with their team with their leader with their department um, then of course they are much more productive uh, they are much more willing uh, they're less sick, for example. They have more more creative ideas um, if they are encouraged to. So all this is interconnected. All this is interwoven. And this is also, of course, uh, due to the culture of the organization. So the culture is having a profound impact on, um, on this one as well. So the culture, and we talked about organizational culture before. Now, uh, the big thing is here, of course, the individual personality, because a group and group behavior is comprised of individuals, of team players. And uh, a, this is what constitutes a group. And the personality is a unique combination, is a unique combination of psychological characteristics that affect how people react, communicate, behave, have certain kind of perceptions and uh, how they're interacting with others. And uh, one of the most widely used um, personality tests is the uh, Myers-Briggs uh, type indicator test. Uh, that is the most commonly used one. And I will quickly explain that. Uh, my people, my students here, um, being in my successful negotiation and communication course know about that already. Um, so the Myers-Briggs type indicator is, uh, is based on the psychology findings of Jung and Freud. And they are uh, stating that um, there are four dimensions that every individual is, um, is, uh, yeah, is imposed on or is uh, affected by. First is, uh, what are the social interactions like? So people can be more extrovert or introvert and um, the Myers uh, Briggs type indicator is coming out with a uh, with a combination of different kind of letters um, so you can see that here if uh, and uh, I would encourage you to do one uh, by yourself on your own you can do that for free online so there are different kind of uh, um, test platforms but you can do for yourself are you considering yourself to be more extrovert or introvert or, uh, of a person? If you consider yourself uh, to be more extrovert, then um, you're having uh, an E. Or are you more introvert than you're having an I for um, introvertness? So the individual's orientation towards the inner world of ideas or the external world of the environment. So that is the first um, characteristic, the first dimension of the Myers-Briggs type indicator. The second one is how are you gathering data? What is your preference set, preferred set? 
is it more sensing is it more analytical or is it more intuitively working so is it more based on uh, gut feeling that, that is strongly impacting this one as well here so then you have to type in s if it's more sensing so or is it more intuitive is the individual's reliance on information gathered from the external world or from the world of ideas possibilities um, of course it has to be stated that no individual and no personality test can ever be 100% correct because we are so complex uh, that it is difficult to press a human being into a form, into a test like that, into a notification. However, it is giving us certain kind of indication. Um, so there, if you do the test, normally you can get a score of maximum 10. So there are some people, if you do the test, you score 10 on the uh, on the E and then you, you score zero on the I. But there are also people who score, I don't know, six on the E and uh, four on the I or five and five. Um, this is, is not an indication <laughs> that you need to go to see a mental doctor, <laughs> psychiatrist. Um, this just means that uh, situation um, based you are having different kind of preferences. You're having different kind of preferences. Uh, you're not very, very clear um, on one aspect here of the personality test, but that is, that is not an issue. Um, the third dimension is the preference for decision-making. That is usually um, very closely related to the preference for gathering data. Um, is it more on the feeling side or is it more on the thinking side then you have to type an f for feeling or t for thinking so one's preference for evaluating information is it more rational is it more analytical is it more logical or is it more based on values and feelings is it more on gut feeling usually but but it is not but usually it, it um it is closely connected to the preference of gathering data so if you're, for example, if you're more the sensing type, then usually you're more uh, the thinking type here as well. But it is also possible that you, you can be um, SF as well. You can be SF as to those kind of dimensions. And finally, what is uh, your style uh, of decision making? Not the preference, but the style of decision making. Is it more perception or perceptive or is it more judgmental? perception means so it reflects the attitude towards the external world that is either task completion oriented so it's more judgmental or is it more information seeking it, then it's more perceptive it, it uh, information seeking is more also more spontaneous so for example if we want to decide as a group to go to the cinema tonight uh and, and they're reopen uh, not in all cities probably but in some cities i think uh cinemas are at least at the edge of reopening and you're asking me oh which uh, movie are we going to see and you see oh let's just go out and find out uh w which we are most uh, fond of um uh, which we would like to see the most and some people say wow wow you didn't reserve any tickets or oh, that is that is not possible right so then if you if, if you have a problem with that going spontaneously to the cinema then you're more judgmental you're more task completion oriented now and um as a logic there is uh there's the poss possibility you can be uh, every kind of type, of course, um, but what the um, the most important things are um, is the so-called Cursey uh, Cursey group. So uh, whether you are ST or SF or NF or NT, and you can uh, you can see it in here, right? Uh, sensing types of people are listed in here um and you see you see all the different kind of letter combinations. so you can you look for your letter combination here if you've done the exercise for yourself or if you complete the test um so uh 
you can you can you can see okay where where I'm located here for example. So my my, my uh, for example my um, my type is I'm here the uh, ENF uh, P this type. This time, ENFP, enthusiastic, imaginative, want a lot of affirmation, rely on verbal fluency and ability to improvise. And um, now that is just an extract. Um, and in uh, the communication uh, lecture, we deal more with the with the impact that the personality test has um, has on the performance uh, as on the performance of people. Because now, what is the logic here? Why are we doing that? Or why, uh, why are we taking a tool such as uh, this one into consideration? Anyhow, the logic is um, very simply speaking that in uh, the German business uh, world, usually what we have in HR in human resource management, we have job descriptions for uh, for people. And uh, so in the job description, it is laid down specifically what are the tasks uh, the individual person, the employee has to um, has to do, has to uh, comply with, has to has to execute on, etc. Uh, yeah. So, um, but usually, um, and then and then what we do. So this is the um, required profile, and then we look at the qualification profile of those uh, of people in order to uh, to look whether there is a match of the uh, qualification of people and the required qualification. And then we hire people or we promote people or we put people on jobs based on the comparison of uh, people's ability and the qualification of what is required for a certain kind of job. What is um, in America it is a bit different because there is an additional component going in because what the Americans have, they have for every job, they have a Myers-Briggs type notification. Why? Because if somebody is ST, somebody is, um, let's look for the ST people here. Um, so it could be this one, ST here. You see that here um, or here. So all this is ST. People are more um, than realistic. They are more pragmatic. They are more analytical. Um, they are practical. Um, yeah. So they are kind of kind of objective. Um, and now, the, those people are completely different from from those people, from my personality type. Now, um, if I'm when I was young and I was your age and I was promoted um, during during my work at Shell, there was basically there was nobody was asking whether I enjoy doing my job. It was just it was just asked or, or uh, evaluated whether I was capable of doing a certain kind of job. So, of course, if you uh, if you are kind of clever, you have a, um, a good uh, degree from the uh, from the university, and you start working at some kind of company, or you're self entrepreneur, whatever it doesn't make any difference. But um, of course, I can um, I can do controlling jobs. I can I can do jobs um, in finance. So I can I can uh, do pivot charts in Excel, and I'm kind of good at that. But I don't enjoy it because it's not complementary to my personality. So I'm more um, uh, a talkative guy, so an extrovertive guy. Now, what the Americans are doing in general, all the American companies or the majority of American companies, they have, in addition to just having a job description, they are having a Myers Briggs type notification for every kind of job. Now that is very interesting because um, they're not only asking whether some individual is capable of pursuing, of executing a certain kind of job, but they're asking whether he or she is really um, enjoying what, uh, what they are doing. Because that is also, and we're talking about that later, motivation theory, because the more you can work, uh, on a job 
or you have the tasks and responsibilities that are close to your personality, the better you are, the more, uh, the more you enjoy work, because uh, that is also uh, having an impact, of course, very, very strongly on the satisfaction and, and then on the performance of, uh, of people. If you would put me or would have put me into an analytical job where I would have been responsible of doing Excel calculations all day, yeah, <laughs> five days a week, I could have done that. But it is a different story, like uh, if you would have put me or like, I, like I've been into a communication uh, focused job when, when I, uh, in which I need to think about strate strategy, need to convince different kind of people of different kind of cultures about a project, because that is more uh, close to the NF type. And that is my personal advice to you and uh, when it comes to your personal development. Always try to look for jobs and tasks um, which are close to your personality, because if you work on those, you're more productive than others. You stand out. It is it is effortless working because you enjoy what you do. Like I'm, I'm enjoying talking to you, and <laughs> although we don't have much interaction in, in today's uh, in today's time, given the pandemic. However, um, what I'm doing is not work for me because it's fun. I enjoy that. Why? Because it's close to my heart and close to what I care about. And you and you sense that as well. And uh, that is also closely uh, connected to what we call the emotional uh, intelligence. And emotional intelligence is the ability to notice and to manage emotional cues and information. And um, there is a, a colleague of mine um, with whom I'm in touch with, uh, Danny Goldman. And Goldman, um, he was writing a book on emotional intelligence. This book, uh, that was the first book on emotional intelligence intelligence and that book is based or the emotional intelligence is based on five um, dimensions one is self-awareness the ability to be aware of what you're feeling so what you re what you really want um, then self-management the ability to manage one's own emotions and impulses self-motivation the ability to persist in the face of setbacks and failures and the self-motivation, self-management uh, will be more easy, like I said, if the task you have to accomplish is close to your personality type. If, for example, on, on the other way around, you're a ST and you're put uh, um, on a job within public relations department, I'm not saying you're going to fail, but it's it's not so easy because it's not close to your personality. Empathy, the ability to sense how others are feeling and social skills, the ability to handle the emotions of others. So all this is connected to emotional intelligence, which is closely uh, related to the, um, to the personality test. Now, uh, there is uh, another study or another approach coming from Holland and Holland was picking up the findings from the Myers-Briggs type indicator and he was trying um, to, 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 to match that, to find a fit between the personality of people and the jobs and tasks they are, uh, they are assigned to. So if you're a realistic kind of, uh, kind of person, here are the uh, personality characteristics. Uh, then you're more likely or you're more suitable to enjoy working as, as a mechanic, for example. Um, or, or in the, um, in the uh, controlling department, in the finance department, right? Uh, so this is just an example. It is not, it, it is not always like that. <laughs> there, there can also be mechanics being very, very, um, I don't know, um, enterprising. Uh, so th that is not a contradiction, but... Um, it is, it is more naturally uh, working like that. 
If you're more investigative, for example, prefers activities involving thinking, organizing, understanding, that is close. Yeah, this is usually what the uh, ST people are, um, are like. Analytical, we talked about that. Analytical, original, curious, independent. Um, then, for example, you can be uh, very, very uh, successful uh, being a mathematician or researcher or so, uh, something like that, right? So these people, it doesn't, but it's very important and we can talk about hours about that. It doesn't mean that these people, the se sensing and thinking people are, are never feeling anything, that they're a cold fish or something like that, right? And they cannot be emotionally intelligent. That is not the case. However, they are more analytical by their personality. Now, the, um, the social people, in general, um, so which have a, um, a strong focus on the uh, intuition and on the feeling side here, um, social, friendly, cooperative. Again, I'm, 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 I'm stressing that doesn't mean that ST people cannot be friendly. <laughs> that is not what Hall Holland has in mind, but he was just having in mind that those people uh, are uh, predestined. So they're, they're more suited for working, for example, as psychologists or teachers, uh, etc., etc. Just to um, to think about that is is very very important, and um, there is um, there is much uh, capacity, much potential in uh, the reflection of which kind of personality is best suited for which kind of a job. If you if you if you don't pay attention to that. It is just balancing the, uh, the required quality qualification profile with the qualification profile of the employees, which results in just uh, sometimes in, uh, in a suboptimal identification of a person with their job and their tasks. I hope this, uh, this point has become, uh, has become clear. Uh, so, of course, that is a very, very complex topic and I was only pinpointing at one key element here of uh, foundations of behavior. But that is, there's a very, very big lever here in this respect. When you just think about the personality of people, when you also form different kind of two, uh, teams and groups, and that is the next chapter we are dealing with next week, um, understanding groups and teams in a better way. You could argue now and you would say, okay, if this is the case, if this is correct, um, the best team is to only have ST people in one team, because then there is no conflict with the NF people, for example, with people like me. But the contrary is true because it is um, they're having different kind of strength, different kind of focus. And this is also what triggers innovation. That is what triggers and fosters and nurtures innovation. If you are having different people, different background, different personality with their opinions, different opinions on the same kind of challenge, on the same kind of, uh, of problem that leads and that fosters and enkindles innovative thinking. Because if you only have NF people, if you're only having NT people, you always see uh, the, uh, the world and the, the problems through the same kind of uh, yeah, glasses and perspective. Thanks very much for your uh, for your time. Keep it short, uh, short and simple. The kiss principle. I applied it one more time. Thanks for your attention. I stay in the line, but I end the recording here. Thanks very much, and I see you for another video soon. Cheers and bye bye.